consciousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The Apostle Paul lived in a world similar to ours, and the preaching of the cross was quite contrary to, to the religion man has created, just as we just as we face today. But Paul was not ashamed to be different. He didn't mind not fitting in. For he knew the power of God that could save him who believes. When we are God's present followers, we are today's Paul. And we need to carry that same confidence and boldness to share his word today. And living by that same faith that Paul had is not just understanding that God is enough and that God is sufficient, but it's about a daily reliance on God and on understand. It's about understanding that we need to rely on Him every day. It's a daily dependence on His power, on His grace and on His mercy and on His constant provision. And we need to ask ourselves, are we living that kind of faith? Are we trusting God with all our hearts in every situation we face? service, I invite you to stand up and worship the Lord together.
our sins. The sins which are done for us. The sins which keeps us in bondage. Not to experience the fullness of life that God has for each and every one of us, planned for us. Besides, even now, each and every one of us should be led by Christ. Be led by Him. Hallelujah. Our minds are deceived all the time when we feel that we want to move away from His ways, from that narrow road. But that's a deception. He knows much better than us. He has the overall view. Glory be to you, Lord. Hear our praises, O Lord. And may this service, may this worship, close up as a fair view in your nostrils, O Lord. Especially for those who have a true heart, are opening their heart, are showing you their heart.
Yes, Lord, you deserve all our praises, Lord. We don't deserve to be here this morning, Lord. But you, when we were your enemies, Lord, you died for us. And you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the worship, Lord. So, Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. So, for the great of God, we have faith. Prayers, much assistant, and the ego to read the scripture.
word sanctified in verse 14 and even in verse 10. In the Greek, it's, it's a present participle, which means the tense used is putting emphasis on the fact that perfection is present and a continuous action. So when we are saved, we are made perfect in Christ, but we need to be sanctified. So, when we accept and receive Jesus, as we read, He remembers our sins no more. And He puts His law in our hearts. So now, let's, let's remember what, what we saw on, on the screen. We saw pride, we saw unforgiveness, but now Jesus puts the law on our hearts. And He writes it in our minds. And now, during, by this process of sanctification, the Lord Jesus changes those things, unforgiveness to forgiveness. He changes pride to humbleness. But it's important that we don't hinder the work of the Holy Spirit. So this is really important. As I said earlier, really, we don't deserve to be here today. When we were still the Lord's enemy, He died for us. So, as we remember, as we have this bread in our hands, we have the cup of the new covenant, let's remember what, J what Jesus did for us on that cross. Let us all eat together, and as I said last week, examine ourselves deep. Let's thank the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your broken word, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died for us. And you don't remember our sins, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Let's all need to get every remembrance of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. By his blood, Jesus tore that, that faith. He tore that curtain. And now we can go into the most holy place. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. So, as we said, this is a process, all right? And the Holy Spirit wants to purge those things that don't belong to Him. Right? And he's changing us and forming us to be into his image. Amen. So, as Pastor Joe prepares to deliver the message today, it's time to give our tithes and offerings. Invited to think and write a letter to Jesus. 
and they are going to share it for, um, with you today. Good morning, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning. Thank you for keeping my family and me safe. Thank you for the last great year. Thank you for holding my hand and being with me in the exams, during the school lessons and during the church lessons. And piano. Please help me with the piano. Please be with me this summer. In Jesus' name, amen. And as you can see, the heart of these children, they did a card, all with stickers, especially for Jesus. Even today, while we hear this, the sermon, the word of the Lord that is going to be given to us, let us pray for the Lord that He will give us this heart. We will hear Masha now. First, I'm going to talk about the Lord. O oh God, my Lord, how great you are. When we look at your love, we see that it's more rich than gold and more pure than honeycomb. This is the prayer. Lord, we trust in you. All we need is that you purify our hearts by like pouring water over dirty hearts. Amen. And um, uh, what, what, I, what I'm here for is that well, I am, uh, after, the middle, after they go in middle class, the, the, the class they are the children, then they go to the senior class, which they, well, which they will be there till about 15 years. They will study theology, they will study hard, they have exams and they have everything. But the problem is, as most of you know, and we pray for our children, that after they finish this class, there is a gap. And these children have to come, come down, they try to listen, okay, they are prepared, most of, most of them they are prepared more than us because they have very good teaching. But the problem is because they are youths, and most of us, they are um, uh, an adults, some of us don't speak to them, they don't have friends, so they finish, they go to the world. Because we cannot cater them. Till today, we cannot cater for them. So, uh, the, the, uh, the flyer that I gave you, I hope that you read it, is uh, that there is the scripture of the talent, and the Lord said that each and every one of us have a talent. He gave each of us. So, uh, let us, each of us, pray, because we, we need to know which, what God wants us to, to do. And what, what we want, um, what I'm here is because we want to offer them these youths. A place where these youth will feel welcome, they will build a relationship, they will be understood, they will be cared for, and where they can freely express themselves. With the aim of, of us that we continue to nurture them, and um, so they will have good relationship with God, and at the same time they will enjoy themselves, and they will have fun. We are now looking for people among you that maybe have been long time praying for their children or for the youths. And, and uh, maybe they will feel in their heart that the Lord wants them to do something for these youths. Um, uh, those of you that's, that they feel today, even if you pray at your heart or you go home and you pray on it, and you will feel on your heart the, the desire that you will do something for the youth, that the Lord had called you for. Amen. It does not mean that your appearance, it can be your single or you, but that what you feel in your heart, let the Lord guide you. Okay? We are going to, what you need to do is to write your name here and your mobile number and give it to, to Paulette or give it to me, I'm checking. And... Uh, on next Saturday, we're going to make a kickoff meeting for those that wish. It does not mean that you're going to do everything by yourself. It's going to be a team. We need a lot of people, so you will not have a burden on of everything on your on you. And if you don't have training, we are going to train you also. The, the church will provide training. 
So uh, what we, what we need is to today pray. Even we can pray now for for us, so the Lord will touch our hearts and uh, guide us. If there is that little seed, the Lord will make a big tree out of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord, please, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray for these people here, that my Lords. You know each and every one of them. You gave them their talents, Lord. Let them do not say no with their hearts, but say, let's, do, let's be done your will. In Jesus' name, amen.
your Bibles, please, and the book of First uh, Kings. verse 11. Before I start reading, this scripture is a scripture which yesterday during our seminar came up as an example of how one must be careful, how believers must be careful not to let anyone deceive them by either disobeying God or not doing God's will. And uh, as I was praying after the seminar um, for the Lord to give me a message, this scripture kept coming to my mind, the, the, the account kept coming to my mind. So um, I thought I would share with you this passage because I feel it is also appropriate um, for today. Um, uh, we find the story of Rehoboam. Um, uh, when the, um, uh, after, just after the kingdom of Israel was divided in two. So we've got the northern kingdom, which is called Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is called Judea. And there we find that um, uh, Rehoboam had a son called Jeroboam, and Jeroboam, who split the, the kingdom, did something which shaped the future of Israel and shaped also um, the way we look at worship. It is a bit in detail, however I will try to make it as simple as possible. First of all we need to understand that God commanded that there will be one altar on which sacrifice will be offered. Not two, or three, or five, or ten. There was to be one temple and one altar for sacrifice. When Rehoboam split the kingdom, he built another altar. And he proclaimed himself as a king and as a priest and was offering substitute sacrifices on this man-made altar. We have Jerusalem in Judea, and then we have Bethel in Israel, two competing religions. A religion was designed by God, the one in Judea, the other religion in Bethel, was designed by men. And this altar and this practice of self-appointed ministers and designing our kind of worship which we think is pleasing God but in the sense it is not, has been a thorn in the church since its inception. We all have experienced in one way the result of a battle order, which means that there is a religion offering worship, sacrifices in its own conceived teaching, not according how God planned it to be. The way that God planned worship the God, the way planned, how we approach Him, is only found in one way, 
and let's get his teaching. Today we say the Bible. On the other hand, we have a man-made religion trying to offer sacrifices on man-made altars and not realizing that in all this we will find people that seem to be religious, seem to be also prophets of God, but they are there just to deviate people from the truth. The passage is long. However, we start to read from verse 11. Excuse me, I will read verse 1 first. And behold, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. Now, the names of the towns is already important. We have Judah, which is uh, an area, and you have Bethel, which is a town or a city. One is worshipping of gods on Yahweh's altar. Bethel is worshipping on the man-made altar. The one in Judea has the God-ordained priesthood, and the other one has the man-made priesthood, self-appointed priests and kings. And therefore, the man of God, which is important, came out of Judah. It is where the true priests and the true prophets live. And he spoke by the word of the Lord to Bethel. He spoke by the word. It doesn't speak, he spoke the word. He spoke by the word. And then try to find out why the preposition is different. Why it is not he spoke out the word, but by the word. And I found that this is a, another idiom in, in, the, in the Hebrew language. Which means that the prophet lived in the word. The, the, the prophet was situated with the word. So he could do nothing without the word. This is a great example for us. Especially in these days when we believe that uh, we are Christians and we are the priesthood of God and we are uh, born again and so forth. Some of us think they are prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and so forth. We cannot serve God and speak truly the word of God unless we are immersed in the word. Of God. Then we find that later on, it's difficult to skip verses really, but if we can just read verse 3 and we go through it, and if we don't finish today, we can continue another time. And no, let's continue reading first two. Just two. Because it's so, so, so powerful. And the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down, and the ashes that are on it shall be pulled out. And when the king heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar of Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him! And his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up, so that he could not draw it back to himself. The altar also was torn down, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me, 
that my handmaker restored to me. And the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come hold me, and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. And the man of God said to the king, If you give me half your house, I will not go in with you, and I will not eat bread or drink water in this place, for so was it commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, you shall neither eat bread, nor drink water, nor return to the way that you came. So he went another way, and did not return by the way that he came to Bethel. Now, an old prophet lived in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told to their father the words that he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? And his sons showed him the way, and the man of God who came from Judah had gone. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. And they settled the donkey for him and mounted it. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with you or go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water here, nor return by the way that you came. And he said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him and ate bread in the house and drank water. And this, as they sat on the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the, man, to the man of God who came from Judah, Thus said the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the command that the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and have eaten bread and drank water in this place of which he said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water, your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. And after he had eaten bread and drunk, he settled the donkey for the prophet from whom he had brought back. And as he went away, a lion met him and on the road and killed him. And his body was thrown in the road, and the donkey stood beside him. The lion also stood beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown into the road, and the lion standing by the body. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. Let us stop there. There are some issues here that we need to look at. One of them is actually a question which we can't really have an answer. Why would God use a lion a false prophet, a deceiver, and then use him and give him a true word from God. Many times we ask ourselves, or we say to ourselves that these things are impossible. 
However, we have to accept the fact that God can use anyone in any situation so that His will will be done. The other issue is why would a prophet, if he was a prophet, live in Bethel when it was a land now consumed with idolatry? The true prophet of God lived in Judea. The true prophet of God had a message. A message like you and I have to speak against the evil of this world. We go into the land of the sinners to speak out the word of God and not to linger with them. This is a biblical principle which we can find in the book of Psalms, Psalm 1, if you would read it with me. Realizes that the way and the seed 